Hello everybody, Dr. Brian here, board certified specialist in internal medicine. Today we are unpacking platelet disorders with a focus on thrombocytopenia in this rapid review. Thank you so much for joining me. From a conceptual standpoint, platelet disorders have to be certified into either qualitative issues, which is a functional problem, and quantitative issues, which is a number problem, otherwise called thrombocytopenia, below 150, right? So qualitative problems have to do with either adhesive problems, secretory problems, or aggregation problems. But quantitative is due to either diminished uh, production or increased acceleration destruction. What causes adhesion problems are von Willebrand disease, which is the most common qualitative issue with platelets. Then we got bernard Soulier syndrome, secretion issues in the way of medication, uremia, hypothermia, and storage pool disease, aggregative problems in the way, once again, of medication, fibrinogen disorders, and glansman's thrombasthenia. What causes diminished production of platelets? Liver disease because you can't produce thrombopoietin, which instructs the bone marrow to produce and churn out more platelets. Um, liver disease also causes you know, portal hypertension, which can cause hyperspinism and chow up platelets. Marrow hypoplasia for whatever reason, ineffective thrombophoresis for whatever reason, marrow infiltration with disseminated infection, commonly TB, or some kind of malignant process, be it leukemia or even secondaries. Destruction of platelets is due to hyperspinism, and we are, said often on the back of portal hypertension coming from cirrhosis. Could be immune thrombocytopenic purpura, it could be a thrombotic microangiopathy, which is a maha typically, which is a microangiopathic hemolytic process, or heparin-induced thrombocytopenia and thrombosis called HIT. Now, guys, this is a practical approach to the, the problem of thrombocytopenia, right? Um, so you establish on your full blood count that the patient's platelets are low. What are you going to do from this point? So a good place to start is to do a peripheral smear. And if you see clumping in the peripheral smear, you know it is pseudothrombocytopenia and not a true reflection of the patient's platelet count. If you see schistocytes, you're thinking, ah, could this be a microangiopathic process? Are we dealing with DIC? Are we dealing with TTP? What's going on? Next step, ask yourself, is the patient on heparin? Now that heparin could be clexane, which is inoxaparin sodium, which we are very fond of using for prophylaxis against uh, thrombosis, right? or used for treatment of pulmonary embolism and DVT, right, for instance, most commonly. Or is the patient on unfractionated heparin? If indeed that is the case, you must entertain the possibility of heparin-induced thrombosis and thrombocytopenia hit, right? Then the next part of call is to check your INR, your D-dimer, and your fibrinogen. If your INR is up, and your D-dimer is up and your fibrinogen is low because it's being consumed, think, is this disseminated intervascular coagulation usually on the back of sepsis? Then you want to check your renal function. Now remember the acronym for TTP, thrombotic thrombocytopenic purpura, is F is fever, A is anemia, T is thrombocytopenia, R is renal impairment, R is neurological issues. Right. So if the patient has any of those features of fat R end, and the main harbinger is diminished or impaired renal function, you must entertain the possibility of TTP. Next part of call, does the patient have liver disease? Are they cirrhotic or is there acute liver failure going on? Then you want to consider portal hypertension with hyperspin as we discussed. Lastly, if all of the above haven't really yielded much in the way of the etiology, consider could this be immune thrombocytopenic purpura, right? And then look for other autoimmune stigmata, right? Especially supporting autoimmune disease, notably systemic lupus erythematosus, right? Is there alopecia? Are there uh, sicker symptoms? Are there oral ulcers? All right, is there non erosive polyarthritis? Is there serocytosis? What about the serology, right? You want to look into that, right? So by and large, guys, low platelets, look at the smear, is there clumping, are there schistocytes, then look, is the patient on heparin, check your INR, your D-dimer, your fibrinogen, run a renal function, consider the possibilities of DIC and TTP, is the patient known with liver disease, consider port life tension with uh, hyperspinism, and lastly, is this ITP. Thank you so much, guys. God bless you and have a lovely day. I'll see you soon with another handy, rapid review in the awesome discipline of internal medicine. You take care. Thank you